Alright, Lions, as someone announced this morning, we have finally a Thousand Year Blood War round 17, maybe? The Invasion Summons are returning tomorrow, featuring some fan favorites, some of the best characters in the game, Bambietta, Kilgay, and also Iba. The question, of course, though, is this banner worth summoning on? And the answer is, yeah, <laughs> obviously, right? Like, Kilgay is one of the most insane characters in the entire game. He's an amazing character, really fun to play with. Bambietta's also really good, and Iban's also a really good farmer. So, of course, it's worth summoning on, but are you going to summon on it? Well, that's a question you have to decide for yourself, but we are going to talk about the banner in this video, breaking down all the value it has, and maybe give you some hints or tips on what to do when this banner does release tomorrow. And the first recommendation I can give is just to wait. You do not need to summon on this day one. If Kilgay Bambayeta or for some unknown reason Iban is your favorite character in the game and you don't care about anything else and you want to go for them, get them 5-5, then by all means do what you have to do, right? But the main reason why we are saying wait because we know there's a lot of big things coming our way, right? Mid-month is coming out on the 16th. It looks to be a pretty good banner in terms of the free new ones. There are also going to be bonus characters in the end of year co-op event, which is happening early this year. So for that reason, mid-month does have some really good value this time around. Obviously, post selection is one of the better banners of the entire year. I know a lot of people are looking forward to stumbling on that. That's happening around maybe December 25th, December 26th. The official date isn't confirmed just yet, but that's when it usually does happen. And at the same time, end of year is also happening. Now, lucky for us, this banner, unfortunately, actually leaves the second the end of month banner gets announced in game, including the filler pool. Now, that means you're not going to get a full understanding of the actual banner itself, whether you want to summon on this banner or the end of year banner. But the Bankai Live, the live stream that will reveal the new characters is happening on the 24th. So basically 10 days away, right? And we'll find out what the end of year characters are going to be and most likely all the skills they are going to have as well. We're not going to know the full banner information, but we will know what the characters will be. And for the most part, whether they are like super omega OP or just like good enough, their end of year characters, they usually are going to be some of the best characters of the year. But you'll know at this point in time, December 24th, if you would want the end of year characters, if there's some Something you're potentially interested in. So because we have poll selection coming up, because we have the end of year banner getting announced on the 24th, and this banner is not leaving until the 28th, I would say wait to see what that is first before you decide to summon on this banner. Of course, you should do the discounts. They're here. You might as well. I might even do the discounts because uh, getting the dupes of Kilgay or Bambietta honestly wouldn't be a bad thing. But if I had any plans to summon on this banner past step two, maybe go to step 5, 10, 15, 20. I would be waiting to see what end of year is first on December 24th. After that date, then you can make a better decision for yourself whether you want to go for that, post selection, mid-month, or this particular banner. But with that said, the banner itself does feature the new setup that they have going for Thousand Year Bloodwork characters. And in that case, they have the three new ones, Bambietta, Kilgain, Iban, three premium characters recently released at the end of 2022. And then they have some older Thousand Year Bloodwork characters that can resurrect, but are also super, super common. The banner itself is okay. Obviously, the main reason why you would be pulling is for Kilgay, Bambiet, and Iban. But at least the premium characters that are featured here are somewhat relevant. Like, they actually can be used. Can't really say the same thing for Toshiro, Mayuri, and Nemu. They're more so just collector items. To a certain extent, Toshiro here is actually usable, but even then, he, you know, still falls behind any recent character released in the last year or two. When it comes to Soifun, she's an arena character. She's actually good in arena, but she also does double down as a pretty decent lead for the range of Spider Guild Quest. She wants to inflict paralysis. She does more damage to paralyzed enemies. She is premium, so she is going to be eventually coming, but getting her duped out wouldn't be a bad thing. Same goes for Jushiro. He is a Guild Quest quest character with the stun rate kill ability that is a week that a lot of people do struggle in if you get him potentially eventually getting duped out he'll be good in that guild quest and then toshiro is the jobler farmer as far as recent characters do go released in the last year or two like these three keto tournament characters aren't really the greatest but they're far from unusable which i can't say the same thing about the older thousand year better characters which are just more so collector's items you might not see the appeal in these characters the keto tournament toshiro jushiro and also soifon but you definitely can get use out of them most than any other character so i don't mind them being in the banner but i will say like they're not really the greatest set of villains but having a recap on bambietta kilge and also Iben. first up let's have a look at bambietta how well has she held up over the last three or so months since her introduction She's great. She's honestly great. To me personally, I more so only really use it in Guild Quest content. That's mainly what she's been designed for. You can definitely use her outside of Guild Quest, but that really comes down to if you are a Bambietta fan. I like Bambietta, but not really enough to use this particular character outside of the mode she was designed for. But you definitely can. 
In Gilchrist, though, she's really good for a high damage output. Frenzy plus two, increased chance to flick Stasmin, which is burn, more damage to burned enemies. And when you do inflict the Stasmin, you get an 80% stat boost to your Spiritual Pressure stat. She has a great set of strong attacks, most importantly that SA2, which is a barrage attack, which if you press it, activates a barrage of attacks with some pretty good AOE to it. And as long as you don't get hit or flash step out of the attack, it will let off this quite long attack that can do a lot of, lot of damage. It's actually really insane how much damage this SA2 can do. It provides a good amount of range and in Guild Quest, it works as like a mini vortex for a short amount of time. But it's really good for doing a lot of damage and that in combination with a Soul Bomb, which is Bombardment, SP Boost, Weakened Defense. She's really good in Guild Quest content. Specifically though, the ranged Captain Guild Quest which for the most part doesn't have that many good options. Other than her, you can only really use 6th Anniversary Aizen, and between the two, of course, Bambietta is the best lead. So in terms of meta, she is meta in the range Captain Guild Quest. Other than that, she's a good character, it's Bambietta, if that's your reason for summoning, then go ahead and summon. Our second character, though, is Kyoge, in debate for the best character in the entire game. To me, he's probably top two, but Kyoge is really impressive, and it's mainly because of his damage output. Frenzy plus two with the best strong attacks in the entire game. When you inflict the stat element, which you can apply drain, you obviously get back up to full stamina, but you also once more get to 80% stat boost to your spiritual pressure stat. You can also do more damage to drained enemies. And again, as already mentioned, he has a great set of strong attacks, but it's a really good set of strong attacks. The SA2 being a distant AoE into a track and vortex is unmatched. But they get even better because every kill you do get, you get more damage thanks to the rampage skill. It's easily able to max it out, and his damage output is just absolutely unmatched. Only matched, to be fair, with some of the other better characters in the entire game. With Chad out this character in Guild Quest, he can solo the Aranka Guild Quest by himself. And in Limit Breaker, thanks to the fact that he does have rampage and and also the 20% strong attack recharge every time you move into another map. That allows the strong attacks to come back instantly, and that therefore makes him the best limit breaker character for any given month, and you can always use him in slot number three. I rarely ever want to use a move source on a character that I have one out of five, but I've been very tempted to put it on Killgate to unlock that focus slot, because at two out of five, he'll be even better. He's an amazing character. It's Killgate. He has some great visuals. Voice actors top notch. One of my favorite character releases of the entire year 2023. He seriously is that good. And then we have Iban. Uh, Iban's okay. Like, for a farmer, he's honestly not bad because he has a good damage output with some good strong attacks. I actually like this character's visuals too. I'm a fan of this Iban. But Caleb knew Iban as a character is not someone you would really summon for, so they want to make you summon for him. And by that, they made him a Lynx or Farmer. More so with the Soul Trait, though, so you can make any power character a Lynx or Farmer by using Iban as a Soul Trait. But you can also double that up onto Swimsuit Ruka, make her give you plus 15 Lynx or Potions. And at the same time, he also is a Droplet Farmer, increasing the drop by 30% for droplets and also guaranteeing you 10 extra droplets. He's actually really good for farming droplets. I've been able to max out all my technique characters thanks to him. So personally, I can definitely recommend this character for the idea of farming link shots and also droplets. And again, he's got a good damage output. So if you take him into epic raids, he's honestly not too bad. So yeah, the battle itself is okay. Like, obviously, the filler pool isn't really ideal here. While I do think Soifon, Jushiro, and also Toshiro are actually good fillers, all things considered when it comes to past thousand year battle banners, could be better. Toshiro, my Yuri, and also Nemu are just collector items. You're not really ever going to use them. And the banner step up itself is a normal step up format. No pity ticket. That's something to keep in mind. So step 1, 6, 11, 16, and 21 are discounted at 150 orbs. Step 2, 7, 12, 17, and 22 are discounted at 200 orbs. Every fifth step guarantees you a featured character, which of course is one of these nine. And step 25 is not a guaranteed character of your choice like it was when this banner first initially released. So that's also something to keep in mind. If you go to step 25, you're not guaranteed to pick Kilke, Iban, or also Bambietta. So yeah, as kind of expected, the banner is worth summoning on with the idea that you're going for Kyoge, Bambietta, and maybe Iban. You can kind of go about Iban to be fair, but Bambietta and Kyoge are definitely worth putting for. Whether you want to pull for them now really comes down to you. Maybe the timing isn't really the greatest, right? We have a lot of really good banners coming our way, especially end of year. For me personally, I would rather pull for newer characters over reruns, even if I am missing them. But as always, this banner will be back in like three or so months time, sometime maybe in February. Maybe you want to go for them then, when it's a lot more 
less stress in terms of like some really big banners coming our way. Again, as we mentioned, I would recommend waiting to see what the end of month banner is going to be. We'll find that out on the 24th of December. That's the best thing I can recommend. Just to wait. There's no harm in waiting. And at that point, you know, if you want to summon for this banner or summon for end of year, then you can make that decision. Because again, the last thing you want to do is spend all your orbs on this banner. And then end of year is absolutely insane and you regret spending orbs here. You don't want to regret spending your orbs. But for me, again, I'm going to be skipping this banner. But then again, to be fair, I've already done a lot of summons on this particular banner. I have Bambietta 3-5. I have Tilke 1-5, Ebon 1-5. And I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't need any more dupes to them. More dupes would be nice, but I'm fine with what I have for them. I'm just happy to have them. And I have all of them on all three of my accounts. So, yeah, these are some easy skins for me. I would definitely be selling my odds for end of year. But let me know in the comments below if you do plan to summon on this banner. If you do, good luck. Hopefully you get what you want in a short amount of steps. With that said, I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.